And now Dr. Min Kyul Koo, professor from Seoul National University, will give his presentation about what is good governance. Please welcome Professor Koo. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure and honor uh, to uh, share my thoughts on global uh, good governance um, with uh, distinguished uh, members of uh, IOC and uh, uh, President Kim Yong-sun. And uh, personally, I first met uh, uh, Mr. Lee sung hoon and Ms. Shim seok ki I thought they were very short because they are short track skaters, but they are taller than I am. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> in fact, this is uh, uh, quite an adventure for me to speak on good governance in front of uh, international sport community. Uh, although I teach uh, various issues on global governance, uh, ranging from international security, trade, finance, and in environment, uh, this is my first appearance uh, to speak about governance in sport. However, uh, while preparing this presentation, I, it was uh, quite pleasant for me to learn that uh, there are uh, lots of uh, similarities. Of course, uh, differences as well uh, between uh, good governance in public administration and good governance in sport. Let me begin with, sorry to be boring, but uh, let me begin with uh, dictionary definitions. Uh, as you know, to govern means to rule over by right of authority or to exercise a directing influence over. It has two primary noun forms. The first one is government. As you may know, uh, government uh, is a body that exercises a control uh, or influence over a various number of people in uh, societies and states. And uh, as you can see, Sorry. Uh, this is the definition of uh, dictionary definition of governance. Uh, as you can see, you can hardly tell uh, the difference between the government and governance. However, there are significant conceptual differences between the two terms, uh, especially in academic world. Many scholars in the field of uh, public administration uh, noted many problems resulting from the so-called government failure uh, due to the lack of transparency, accountability, efficiency, etc. So there emerged an initiative called Governing Without Government. We are not talking about uh, uh, anarchy. But uh, this, this was a grassroots uh, uh, efforts to reform a very hierarchical government. Most notably, neoliberal reforms and globalization have deeply transformed the state and set in motion a, a momentous shift from government to governance. So, uh, conceptually speaking, the shift from government to governance uh, involves significant level of uh, democracy and democratization at both national and international level. So uh, I would define governance as a web of vertical and horizontal networks linking actors at different levels of public and private spheres. Then now we have uh, uh, another term, good governance. What do you mean by good governance? Uh, against the backdrop that I just uh, introduced you, 
The concept of global go uh, good governance originated in the field of international aid community to improve the effectiveness of global aid. Until the 1980s, the recipient countries were obliged to downsize their governments and implement the market liberalization. However, in the 1990s, the international aid community uh, realized that the lack of uh, good governance was the main cause of uh, bad performance uh, in these market-oriented reforms. So, good governance uh, in the field of international development and aid uh, aims to promote transparency, decentralization, and accountability to improve the effectiveness of uh, international aid. So good governance in sport, in contrast to good governance in the field of international development sector, the emergence of good governance in sport was uh, inherently a bottom-up process. As the numbers of corruption, doping, and uh, match-fixing increased, grassroots efforts began to raise governance in sport, uh, uh, the governance standards in the sports sector. So uh, this is a very uh, important difference between uh, the same term in different sectors. Uh, in the international, community, uh, international aid community, it was basically top-down uh, approach, whereas uh, in uh, sports sector, uh, it started as a bottom-up process. Uh, as known very well, uh, the European Union has been leading uh, this in initiative and this process uh, over the past decade. Plus, uh, as there is a growing need for building partnerships among stakeholders, both international and uh, national, the International Olympic Committee uh, participation in global governance has also been quite remarkable in recent years. For instance, the IOC proposed the basic universal principles of good governance of the Olympic and sports movement in 2008, and the Olympic Congress accepted, uh, adopted them in 2009. At this point, uh, I must say that uh, there are still very serious pros and cons uh, over this issue. Critics of good governance argue that Western countries' institutions often set the standards of good governance uh, by which to compare other countries' institutions. International aid agencies and uh, the authorities of uh, rich countries often focus the meaning of good governance to a set of uh, requirements that conform to their own agenda rather than uh, the agenda of uh, developing or poor countries. Nevertheless, I believe the term of uh, the term good governance contains universal values such as transparency, participation, accountability, equity, democracy to affected organizations. Uh, in this regard, I found an interesting survey result. Uh, hopefully, uh, you are not offended, especially IOC members uh, will not be offended. Uh, I will explain this uh, uh, later. Anyway, the survey was conducted by the One World Trust, an independent uh, think tank located in the United Kingdom. Out of uh, 30 companies, international intergovernmental organizations, and voluntary groups and charities, the IOC was found to be the least accountable and transparent global organization. Uh, this is a very sorry news, but uh, we, don't, we don't have to be disappointed because you know, apparently this is NGO, uh, a survey uh, conducted by NGO, and uh, uh, it has some uh, bias 
And uh, another good news is that uh, uh, significant international organizations such as NATO and uh, IAEA are also ranked pretty low, slightly better than uh, IOC. Well, the reason why I just you know, uh, brought this issue up is that um, uh, first, the survey conducted in 2012 does not uh, properly uh, reflect the late, latest effort of IOC. Uh, plus, uh, this means something. We still have a lot of, you know, a long way to go to convince the international community and uh, uh, involve the stakeholders that uh, the good governance is a way to go. So the good news is that um, the uh, new IOC president, uh, Bach, said last December, it's about the principles. Good governance for the IOC is a key issue. We need to be strict and to make sure the rules of good governance are being applied. So uh, uh, for the uh, informed audience, uh, you must know uh, in what context this statement uh, came out. Uh, he was talking about the India case. So fortunately, uh, during the Sochi Olympic Games, the IOC reinstated India along its athletes to once again compete under their country's flag after a ban of uh, more than a year. So this instance, or this case, clearly uh, indicates the commitment of IOC to, uh, to good governance. In conclusion, I would like to ask you to think about good governance and beyond. Maybe. Uh, it sounds unfair uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, good governance, uh, and um, I'm trying to just you know uh, propose uh, another term, which is collaborative governance. But um, good governance and collaborative governance are uh, closely related. So uh, I think uh, in that context, we can improve. Uh, the conceptual background of uh, good governance. Collaborative governance is a form of governance in which participants representing different interests are collectively empowered. This is a very important part. To make a policy decision or make recommendations to a final decision maker who will not substantially change consensus recommendations from the group. This concept brings public and private stakeholders together in collective forums with public agencies to engage in consensus-oriented decision-making. So conceptually, the, uh, the only difference is that the good governance uh, emphasizes the key principles like transparency and accountability. And on top of that, collaborative governance emphasizes the empowerment of all participants, both public and private. As Ms. DeFrance noted earlier, sports belong to all of us. With collective efforts of all, all, all of these organizations, I firmly believe that uh, sports can make this world a much better place. Thank you very much. <laughs>